you know, this incredible achievement of bringing back to the planet Earth after over 10,000 years of extinction, uh, three direwolf pups. And a lot of people said amazing, but there were way too many people saying, uh, is this real? Is this crazy? You know, what is this guy doing? Uh, and, you know, to those haters out there, listen to this episode, because I think this is an extraordinary achievement uh, that heralds a, you know, a future of synthetic biology uh, that's going to blow our minds as much as AI is blowing our minds today. So, so Ben, how are you feeling about this? What was, what was all this controversy about? Well, I, I feel great. You know, I, I, you know, I, I've got, I've got weird, uh, tough skin, right? I, I don't, I think that if anyone thought they were going to go into the de-extinction world, uh, which involves, you know, conservation, synthetic biology, AI, uh, you know, uh, there, there's actually about 31 different ways to classify an animal. So you're, you're, you're dabbling into an area where a lot of people have a lot of opinions on a lot of different topics. So I think that it would have been really naive, uh, you know, to go to think that you're going to go into something like this in, in, and not have a lot of skepticism and a lot of negative feedback from the start. And then you're going to, it's, it's only going to get worse as you're successful, right? It doesn't go the other way. And so we've talked about this for a long time is like, what happens when we actually start to show the world animals? What, 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 how does that feel? But I feel fantastic. The team feels fantastic. I, I think the only, and I'll talk about the controversy. The only thing that I think is a little sad in my mind, I think you nailed it in, in your blog post, um, is that people miss the science. Like, yeah. People miss the fact, and I'm sure we'll go, to, go into it today, but it's like, and I, look, I'm not a scientist, so it, 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 it doesn't affect me. Like, I sleep fine at night. But, you know, we had these incredible women and men that have spent the last, you know, 18 months, seven days a week, passionately in love with bringing back the direwolf. And whether you want to classify it as a direwolf or a colossal direwolf or a genetically modified gray wolf, whatever you want to do, which we'll get into the, that conversation at some point, uh, that doesn't matter. The fact that they took 72,000-year-old uh, DNA from a skull and 13,000-year-old DNA uh, from a tooth mapped it and built a nearly complete direwolf genome, which before this, there was only 0.15% uh, uh, coverage right, uh, of the genome, uh, to, to go to nearly complete genome and to then select the genes that drove the core phenotypes of a direwolf engineer it into a gray wolf cell, which for many don't know this, it is the closest living relative. It's not the closest relative, it's the closest living relative on the planet, which is a non-model species, by the way, no one's ever done this. And then to clone that, where you have a healthy birth of animals that exude phenotypes or physical attributes that are driven by genes that have been lost for 12,000 years, it's magic. And, and I feel it's like a miracle. it's a miracle <laughs> and, and people just like, and, and not to mention just the genome engineering, right? So on our mouse, we, we announced the woolly mouse a couple a month ago, and we had eight edits uh, in seven genes. And we did it all at once using multiplex editing, meaning we did it all at once, 100% delivery, 100% efficiency, zero off target effects. That's a miracle. And yet we did get feedback on that. There's like, People have made eight edits before, but yeah, they made them sequentially over eight generations. And so to go from eight edits to 20 edits, now using 15 of those edits being ancient DNA variants, it's awesome. And so the only thing that I was sad about is I don't really care what people call it, right? I'm not asking people to go to our website or, or watch our videos. I don't really care. But I, I think it's sad for the scientists that at, that at a minimum, I think people could have elevated the incredible work by the women and men at Colossal and our academic contributors to the project. I have so many questions, buddy. Uh, and I'm so proud of, of you. And, and just for full disclosure, I'm a seed investor uh, and advisor to uh, Colossal Biosciences. I've, I've met Ben. And there's something about you as a CEO uh, that have, you've got the right phenotypic attributes that people just want to support you. And what you've done, I mean, how old is, bio, is Colossal these days? We were, we were founded in uh, September 2021. So okay, so you're four years, years old. And uh, four years old. You, you went from a $0 valuation at a first conversation with George Church 
to now your say it. What's your valuation today? Uh, our current valuation is ten point two billion. Ten point two billion. That's pretty insane in four in four years. Yeah. The science, real quick. Uh, you know, sort of uh, de extinction one hundred and one. Okay, so the science. Uh, and and the, one of the reasons why we had to raise so much capital is you have to build the entire system, right? So just like going to space or even just building a software system, the whole system has to work. You can't just design the software. You got to build the software. You got to build the hosting. You got to build all the API calls. So you you have to think about it. So we have, I think like my background is mostly in software, so I try to think about things like like how you build software. And so um, you you first have to get ancient DNA, right? And so there's kind of three fundamental parts, right? There's ancient DNA. There's the closest living relatives, and then there's the tools to make it possible. So how ancient, old is the oldest ancient DNA? Because, I mean, I'm going to ask you, because everybody asks you, it's your number one question. Can you bring back dinosaurs? Is there any dinosaur DNA out there? There is no, there is no dinosaur DNA. George and I both agree philosophically that you should not ever say things are impossible because maybe we don't fully understand it yet. I think we're learning things every day. Um, which is also not a very academic mindset. I might have you. Most academics think we know everything. Um, so I deal with that quite a bit. Um, mm. But I think I know nothing. So I'm on the other side of the spectrum. Um, but uh, right now, uh, you can go back a little over a, a million years. Our oldest, we, we have about 59 mammoth genomes that we're working with. And our oldest is a step mammoth, um, which I would argue is still a woolly mammoth, but a step mammoth that is currently classified. Uh, and it's 1.2 million uh, years old. Awesome. But, but uh, most of the DNA we work with is, um, depending on the projects, hundreds to thousands of years old in that kind of range. We're still a long it de time. It degrades, it, DNA degrades very rapidly. Very, easily. very, very rapidly, right? The minute you get blood out of a system, uh, it starts to degrade, right? And so, um, so what we do is you first have to get uh, fine ancient DNA. And you've got it a lot of times there's this thing called coverage, right? Because these, these big uh, DNA reading machines, um, they, they aren't a hundred, they're, they've gotten incredible, but they're not hundred percent accurate. So the more coverage you can get, meaning the more times the full genome that you can read, the higher likelihood that they know it, you know, at, at 3,081, that that's a C, right? Versus a G, right? And so they're, it's giving it almost like a probabilistic score for each letter at each, at each space. And at each, each position, space. right? Yeah, the each position. So, so the more coverage you can get. So if you only have like one X, meaning that you got, there was, you do, this is a destructive sampling process, meaning you put it in, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like when that, that old claw game, you put it in and if you don't get the teddy bear, it, you still lost your money, right? And so you, you put the <laughs> DNA in and, and do the, you do this library prep, but it, it destroys the library in the, in the sequencing process, right? So, so therefore, you've got to get enough DNA. And the problem with ancient DNA is, to your point, Peter, it, it degrades very quickly. Uh, cold, dry places are the best places we get DNA. Uh, but it degrades very quickly because of heat, acidification. Uh, that's why I love brand tar pits is terrible for, for this. Um, uh, and also, you have animals that die on top of animals. You have animals that eat animals, defecate on animals. You got bacteria. So you have to then screen it and make sure you understand what's truly endogenous, like what is actually that animal, right? And so, and that's literally kind of a numbers game, right? So sometimes you get zero DNA on species. Sometimes you get a lot of endogenous DNA. So, so the put, is it mosquitoes trapped in amber just isn't the thing. It, it's just, so not that we've tried, but <laughs> uh, amber is not a great uh, storage vehicle. It's very porous. It's not a great storage vehicle for DNA. So there is no DNA for that. And, and I don't think that we'll get back to, I don't want to ever say impossible because who knows. But, um, but I, I, you know, people still think Loch Ness Monster is there. So if, if some crazy lineage of dinosaur magically existed somewhere and died during the Ice Age, then that would have been great. But I don't know if that, that I don't think that most likely did not happen. So, um, so you can go back about a million years. So then you get these pieces of DNA, you do the sequencing. And, you know, we got about a 13x. So we had a full read of the genome 13 different times. And for, you can do what we do probably at five to six x, but you really, if you get north of 10 or especially north of 20, then for what we do, which is called functional de-extinction, because we're not trying to clone these extinct species. There's no living cells. You can't clone from a dead cell, from, from, from bone. You can't clone, clone from a, a, a dead bone. Uh, we're trying to identify and read the genome and then use synthetic biology to engineer in those lost uh, genes uh, to time. 
And so once you read it, you compare it to the closest living relative because why would, you know, it's like, if you're going to make a dire wolf, you shouldn't start with a frog because there's <laughs> you know, hundreds of millions of you. That's a lot of changes, right? And so uh, dire wolves, for example, are 99.5% the same as, as uh, gray wolves. Gray wolves. And, okay. um, and many people didn't know this until we just submitted this paper, which is currently the number one paper on bioarchives. We actually crashed bioarchives on, so two other weird things. We crashed bioarchives on Friday, uh, on Thursday when we uploaded, bioarchives went down. Uh, it was the number one research paper. I, I think it still is right now, and it's on a preprint server. Oh, and by the, and also Reddit, Reddit shut it da- shut down Colossal for a week. They said they literally put out a statement. I don't know if this has happened before. It, it, there was a statement last night that said any mention of Colossal, Colossal Biosciences, Dire Wolves, any memes will be banned for one week. <laughs> wow. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. So anyway, back to the science. So, so once you, once you have, um, and, and there's no like GCP of species, which I think there needs to be, we're actually advocating the federal government to do this. There's no like bio bank or bio vault, like the equivalent of the seed vault that has all these cells for wolves that are immortalized or pluripotent stem cells. No one's done genome sequencing on all of this. No one's done any of that. So then we have to go do all that. And then you compare the two. And then once you identify those genes, we look for areas uh, in coding regions and in regulatory regions and in areas that we know will drive um, uh, or we at least believe will drive uh, certain types of phenotypes. And then we engineer them into the genetic donor. In this case, it's the closest living relative being the gray wolf. And then we identify those, we, ed- we edit those into the gray wolf. And then we do a process called somatic cell nucleotransfer, which is basically cloning, which, they, which Dolly made famous. Uh, only we now use like robotics and lasers and all kinds of stuff to make it much more efficient. You put it into a host, and if everything goes well, you get a healthy 